Hi, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Red True Diaries. <sighs> Tonight is exceptional. Today is exceptional in general. Um, <clears throat> going to read from a few things. I'm going to provide a little background first. So today is Sunday, November 15th, and... Uh, I honestly am not sure if the Paris attacks happened on Friday or yesterday, but uh, the terrorist attacks in Paris um, and contemplating death, in which this time of year, especially the Scorpio time of year, is it, it encapsulates um, that cycle of death, birth, death, rebirth, um, it's heavily on my mind and finding out about the terrorist attacks in Paris, especially after a good friend of mine recently returned from Paris and I know like an ex-boyfriend of mine still has family in Paris who apparently lives only five blocks away from where one of the attacks happened. It, uh, it, it touched me personally, especially I was just there last year as well as many others across the country who have banded together in support of Paris and France in general. It seems that, especially with technology, many of us uh, feel the effects almost as if they were you know, here and affects our loved ones, which I think is awesome to see the solidarity uh, that the attacks did bring out. And on a personal note, um, today is the first day of my period, which I didn't plan to record, you know, that today, but um, in terms of it being the first day of my cycle, and I, I'm fairly certain I've done at least two episodes where it just happens to be the first day of my cycle too. And the key word being cycle, that death is not an ending. It is a, say, a form of an ending, but it's also a beginning as well. And um, so it's been a very trying day. This has been a very trying time in general. And I'll be completely honest. I am not very happy these days. In fact, I am unhappy most of the time. Now, not depressed, but simply, you know, just doing what I can to feel... A bit of joy where and here where and there here and there <laughs> where and when I can experience it and it's not uh, it's not something you know from the outside it's just part of life and that's what I want to focus on tonight from the things that I read about embracing pain and the challenges of life and not running from it because I would one of the big things that happened to me that you know is very personal uh, and unusual is that this morning I awoke to a text from one of my best friends saying that her mom died, and I I know her mom. I haven't seen her in quite some time, but 20 years ago I used to date her brother, and so I used to interact with her mom a lot. And uh, this is actually before she and I were even really friends. We knew who each other, I mean, we knew each other, but um, we weren't friends until about 10 years later and about uh, a little more than 10 years ago that we started being friends. In any case, her mom, I believe she's in her 70s, but I, I know it was unexpected. She didn't even get into details with me. And this friend happens to be a Scorpio too. And, uh, and I know this is really painful for her. And she's far away. She lives far away. And I I can only I can only be there so much for her. And it's shocking to me, let alone um, you know, something that I feel grief about, let alone I can only imagine how she feels, especially knowing 
this is just the beginning, you know, then you have to be around the rest of your family who is also grieving as well as attend the funeral and go through the entire process that is the grieving and mourning process. And especially right before the holidays. Yeah, but it's something that just about all of us are going going to go through, have gone through at some point. It's it's a rite of, rite of passage. It's part of life. And it is important for us to be there for each other and to connect and remember that we're not alone through this suffering, through the pain that is the human experience. And so I'm going to share some of the things that help me deal with these inevitable pains of the human experience and not run from them, but embrace them and be honest with ourselves and others about them. Because it's again, even though it can feel like the end and that for some of us that we want life to end, when life doesn't really end, it just changes form. So on that note, taken from the Celestial Guide of 2016, I'm going to read about the Scorpio. Scorpio, a fixed sign, is true to its convictions, set in its ways. Scorpio is ruled by energetic Mars and by Pluto, the planet of intense desires. The negative polarity gives Scorpio a very responsive nature, with much of its Martian forcefulness hidden from view. It is also a water sign, giving it an unstable emotional nature. The dichotomy of its fixity and instability often leaves the Scorpio at war with itself. Scorpios have powerful feelings and emotions and a strong sense of purpose. They are very imaginative, subtle, persistent, and determined. Their negative traits include being resentful, stubborn, obstinate, secretive, suspicious, and jealous. Scorpios are self-contained and may be self-centered. They are concentrations of vast amounts of stored energy ready to burst forth. Whatever Scorpios really wish to achieve, they probably will. They have a great deal of personal magnetism and healing power. The symbols of Scorpio have a hierarchy, starting with the scorpion or serpent at the first level. The Scorpio ascending to higher levels of consciousness is symbolized by the soaring eagle. The highest level of Scorpio, which I thought was really funny when I read this, is the phoenix. The mythical bird which flew so high that it was consumed by the fire of the sun and then rose again from its own ashes. This is symbolic of the Scorpio need to regenerate itself through suffering and often with what appears to be self-destructive behavior. Remember, operative word be it appears. Scorpio needs to experience life in all its facets with great depth and intensity. No other form of experience will do. And that's with an exclamation point at the end. Such fun. So <clears throat> I'm also going to read a poem by Khalil Gibran called On Death. And this is taken from the book of his, a book of his that I absolutely adore. I love it. It's called The Prophet. You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of the spring. 
Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet he is not more mindful of his trembling? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. The last lines hit me.